welcome to the Get Fit with Jodell podcast. I am, as usual, Jodell, and I am honored now for the fourth time to have my Swedish father, <laughs> at least adoptive father. Um, Dr. Ali Johansson out of Sweden has joined me graciously um, on this uh, cold and blustery morning here where I live in the Midwest. I don't know what it's like for him, but we have more to discuss because if you've missed our first three podcasts together, uh, we just never have enough time to touch on all of the different health effects that Dr. Johansson has vastly studied over his years being a professor at the Karolinska Institute um, on the health effects of electromagnetic radiation, how it affects our health, how, it, how cell phones and smart devices and the internet of things and all of these things are culminating to be um, issuing some health effects to all of humanity. And um, today we've got some very important things to discuss with regard to even the bees, the population of bees and how they affect our health and how we, we need to do all we can to support the health of bees in the world because it means our health too. Um, we're going to discuss satellites. There's a lot of satellites being launched. What are those doing to our health? And then also the differences between um, non-ionizing radiation and radiation that is um, ionizing, you know, natural EMF versus non-natural, non-native EMF, how it affects our skin, how it affects our endocrine hormones, how it affects our sleep, you know, all of these things are something that people just kind of put on the back burner. We have these little rectangles we carry around. We have all of these devices in our house. I think there's on average, people have at least 10 different devices in their house, all connected to Wi-Fi at any given moment. And what is this doing to our health? We don't know in the long term because we've only had this as a part of our life for a little over you know, two decades. So it's time that we look at these from the standpoint of science and the data that we do have and think maybe, just maybe it's not always about the food. There's more going on in our world than, than just uh, poor food quality. So Dr. Johansson, thank you once again for joining me. Good morning, by the way, or maybe good afternoon where you are. Well, here it's uh, eight minutes past four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. So here in Sweden right now, it's already completely dark outside, mm -hmm. but uh, on the whole, it's a fantastic day here. Mm -hmm. And you said that I am uh, your adopted father, and <laughs> that's a great, great honor, I'll say, because your expertise, and especially when you read uh, on your website the kind of uh, services you can offer, it's uh, very, very impressive. And allow me also to be somewhat of a you know, stern teacher and tell mm. all your viewers and listeners that they should really go back and listen to the previous uh, meetings we have had. And also, of course, to others that you have recorded uh, and really take time, uh, try to uh, drag themselves away from, uh, you know, entertainment and television and game shows and whatever, and sit down and really listen and also read and uh, contemplate and uh, they're warmly welcome to uh, get reading material from me and from others and there it's already out on the internet and uh, try to ponder a little bit and you already have touched upon some of the subjects we are going to talk about and for me it's um, well I have to be brutally Swedish now you know <laughs> and, uh, and Swedes are very brutal you know they are not so polished and and, and I'm disappointed actually and uh, I see very often that uh, uh, we write publications and uh, people say to us that wow that's fantastic but when you test them on their homework you realize no they haven't read it. They looked at the title and that's it. And that's not reading, you know. And um, sometimes I feel stressed and especially when we talk about, for instance, the pollinators, but also all other types of insects. And uh, I think we have touched a little bit upon it before. And it should be remembered that worldwide, uh, it is said that in the order of 44 zero percent of all types of insects are gone. Yes. In Germany in 2017, it was reported that more than 75% um, of different types of honeybees and bees uh, are gone uh, and also other pollinators. 
And uh, I just recently saw a few days ago that in the United States, more than 99% of bumblebees are gone. Mm. And if that doesn't drag people from uh, TV and entertainment and uh, passive usage of their smartphones, then I don't know what. And uh, we need to really step up our engagement. And uh, you and I, for instance, Yudel, we are important, no question about it, but we are too few. We right. need more people out there engaging and knocking on the door of parliaments, governments, White Houses, uh, of, of um, uh, houses of representatives, senates and so on, asking questions. And of course, on the different departments, authorities, asking them what's going on, tell us, tell us, tell us, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always recommend that people should sit down at their kitchen table and prepare questions that the authorities uh, only can answer with a yes or with a no mm -hmm. or with the very important answer we don't know mm -hmm. or with a figure slash number if that's the question mm -hmm. and make it simple and one of the simplest questions I very often get from concerned parents, teachers, headmasters and schools and so on is the simple question cell phones for instance or wireless wi-fi routers are they safe for children yes or no and i have to tell them i'm sorry but no they are not safe mm -hmm. uh, and i give them some reading material and people they do get upset but you know there are so many loving parents around the world and most of them have not yet woken up and uh, they need to be informed and educated and therefore you what you are doing is extremely important you know because uh, it's like the classical rings on water spreading and sharing information and i always brutally again as a swede you know i always tell my audiences when i give lectures don't trust me trust yourself go back home this evening do your homework yeah. sit down and read compare think uh, and um, uh, try to reach a conclusion. And if your conclusion is, yes, this is safe, mm. then you have to go back to the classroom and start reading again, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do trust you because I've seen, if you Google your name and you see the publications that come mm -hmm. up with the amount of research that you've done and the amount of studies you've been involved in over the years, it's, it's phenomenal. So I applaud you for that. But you know, the, you. I'm not even so concerned about the pandemic we're living in as much as the pandemic we've been in for the past decade or so of too many people in fight or flight. It's a new, it's a pandemic of people unable to calm down, going from one stressful situation to another. There, you, you'll hear people say, "Oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I've got this going and that going." And you know, I'll have nutrition clients that say, "Well, when I get to this spot, then I can work on that." Well, we, we need to get people to calm down and we need to get people to sleep yeah. and we need to get people to appreciate each day that every day can have an exquisite moment in it. It doesn't have to be you're rushing, 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 doing cramming as much into one day as you can just to crash into bed at night. We need to appreciate creation and the beauty all around us. So, you know, when we look at the amount of pressure on us, not just social pressure, because you go on social media and they see their friends traveling here or they're these other people that run a similar business doing this and we're constantly bombarded with the things we should be. You don't have the latest vehicle according to the commercials on TV. You're not eating this food. You don't have the latest iPhone. You have the old iPhone. So you don't measure up. Everything tells us you are not enough. Um, so that's the stress and the pressures and the anxiety side of it. But also, to your knowledge and with your understanding, are these devices causing us undue anxiety and stress just from the physical ramifications of them? Indeed, they are. And also, uh, again, you know, the addictive behavioral yeah. side of them is tremendous, you know, mm -hmm. and it's shocking to see adults here in Sweden and elsewhere in the world being so completely sucked into these devices, primarily smartphones, but also other things. And as you say, uh, we are taught to always buy the latest. And if not, then we are not 
uh, sort of inside the inner circles of society. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, th that definitely hampers us, but also uh, society as such drives us because I had today an example uh, using this laptop, I was trying uh, to pay a fee for applying for a visa mm -hmm. uh, at an embassy somewhere in the world it didn't work because my computer had too old software. So I had to rush away to a library nearby, <clears throat> ask them if they had more modern computers. And yes, they had. Mm. And then it worked, you know. And then I felt, wow, we are driven always to consume, 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 yeah. you know. Yeah. And it creates a stressful situation. I hadn't planned at all to go to this library. On the contrary, you know, I was preparing for this talk instead, uh, but I had to run away because it was deadline today. And this is always going on all the time. Uh, and I think, as you say, and I love reading on your website uh, about what you can offer to people. There is so much information and knowledge, very, very well based information and knowledge. And uh, it sort of boils down to a very simple uh, effects in our life. Uh, and um, I wish I had met you <laughs> already 50 years ago, oh. but that would have not been possible because I have definitely been in this, what, what is called rat race in science collecting you know more papers more successes more prizes etc cetera, etc cetera. and without realizing it was not the right way to do it and i woke up uh, let's say 25 30 years ago uh, and realized how i actually should behave but mm -hmm. i still have a lot to do especially on the food intake slide uh, I was yesterday at my GP and she scolded me because I had eaten too much candy, I would say, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was a little bit angry and, and so now I have to really, and you know, I'm, I'm trying really to listen to people like you and to others, uh, but um, well, I'm, I'm not a good boy. <laughs> Well, you know, I look at technology similarly to nutrition, such as um, we can be in the modern world and we can do certain things. Our body can handle once in a while. So you have to take an emergency phone call from a cell phone. Okay, your body can handle that. But it's the day in, day out of holding the cell phone against your head that overwhelms your body. Similarly, you know, yeah. you can have a piece of candy here and there, who cares? So your body can handle yeah. those once in a while, but it's the yeah. day in, day out of this constant processed, unnutritive food that we take in. That's when we get damaged. Yeah. And so if people will learn the health effects, like you said, question, look it up, see what's happening when you have your Wi-Fi constantly on, because it's yeah. junk, it's junk food for your body. It's, it's yeah. not helping yeah. your cells. It's, and it's aging you, it's not anti-aging you, it's making our aging no. speed up faster. And so no. to that effect, I know that you have studied a lot on dermatology. What would you say that, that the health effects of EMF, this um, Wi-Fi, the smartphone always in our pocket, always being on your device, what does that do to our skin health and our aging? Well, I mean, not only skin and aging to our entire body, Mm -hmm. And um, we have looked especially on skin because it's easier to get hold of pieces of your skin rather than of your heart or brain and so on, which people generally want to keep for their own. And, <laughs> but um, yeah, in short, what, what surprised us was that, and you touched upon it before, um, the changes we have seen uh, very, very closely mimics what you would see from ionizing radiation. And just to give you some examples of ionizing radiation, that could be the gamma radiation you have from radioisotopes like uranium, plutonium, um, radium, and so on, uh, which is extremely dangerous, of course, extremely, extremely dangerous or X-rays or very strong ultraviolet light, which really quickly damage your skin. And when we looked in our microscopes, and this is 
way back in the 1980s and 90s, we saw the very same alterations from non-ionizing radiation, like uh, ordinary household television sets, ordinary household computer screens. Uh, and it, of course, the alterations took much longer time. What plutonium would have done in a second would take hours for the computer screen to achieve the same level of uh, cellular and molecular alterations. Mm -hmm. And we were able to only study so-called acute changes maybe within a day. And as you say, wow, when you have had these gadgets on you for, well, soon you will have generations that are born into it, having it on them for their whole lifetime. Yeah. Uh, and for instance, here in Sweden, it has been investigated regarding how often people look at their smartphone. And on average, a person in Stockholm, Göteborg, which is the second largest uh, town in Sweden, they would look around 200 times yeah. a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, how do they even manage their normal life with children, dogs, cats, goldfishes, their job, et cetera, you know, if they are constantly, you know, just checking, checking, checking. And um, so it's a really nervous habit and, um, and it, it is uh, feeding your brain with, uh, I think you said toxic information, you know, it's uh, just of no use at all. And when also people were asked uh, what kind of uh, questions they were trying to solve using their smartphone, there were no questions, you know, there were like ads for fashion, for cars, for food, and uh, funny videos and so on. That was what they were consuming all the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, also selfies they had taken of themselves yeah. or of their surrounding and they were posting it. Uh, and um, I, I think uh, in a way, uh, people need to rethink their life quality. And I was at a meeting some days ago and it was very interesting. Um, people were given a choice, adults were given a choice between a brown envelope, which could contain a hundred or a thousand or 10,000 US dollars. Mm. That was the option. Or they could instead pick a puppy a kitten or a baby. And 100% went for the puppy, kitten and baby. Mm. No one wanted to have this envelope, oddly enough. And you know, Sweden as the United States is based on money, mm. but they were craving something else. And without understanding what they did, they went for the baby or for the kitten or for the puppy. Mm. And that's very telling, you know, and I think, um, all these services has to be re-evaluated and the only persons who can do it are adults, mature persons in the room. And um, at least in Sweden, there is right now a tremendous focus on so-called smart workplaces and smart homes. Mm -hmm. And there were recently a television program about the fifth generation mobile telephony, which is connected very much to the internet of things. And now around the corner, the internet of bodies, we should have things on us and in us that will communicate with different types of base stations. Uh, so it's just coming around the corner. And in this program, they showed a lot of products and then they visited a home uh, with a mother and the father and two children. And they had a smart home and the father he was running around shouting things like lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off. And I don't know for your American listeners and viewers, but for me, if I had been the woman, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought it was so very hot and sexy, you know. And you saw that the woman actually, she was frowning her face. And I think she felt that he was pretty silly. And if that's, yeah, if that's the future for mankind, maybe the overpopulation question will be solved. When did it become difficult to turn on a light switch? Like yeah. when did that become a problem? And, and, and when we, I mean, we, we, we are supposed to be like 100% handicapped right. with all due respect 
for really handicapped people. But I mean, you and I, for instance, we can turn on and off uh, computers, uh, lights, and television sets, radios, whatever, you know. And But this man, he was <laughs> jumping around in his silly small socks, shouting, lights on, lights on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, yeah and the, children, the children, you know, they looked with very big eyes at daddy, you know, they had very big eyes. Oh. So that was in a way good that uh, the program, being a long ad actually for this technology uh, type of uh, living, uh, but I think they didn't succeed. I think people felt that, no, honey, I don't want to have that, you know, I want you to whisper other things in my ear than lights on, yeah. lights off. You know? <laughs> and I feel like when you look at people today, they look stressed, they look anxious Very, when you're out and about, yeah. um, they look like they don't have enough time. Uh, they're yeah. very, pre people don't stop and talk anymore. Or when friends are trying to get together, or I might message someone and say, hey, let's meet for coffee. Oh, I don't have time. I got to do this, 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 that, and the other we don't have time because we're spending so much time on these devices, whether it's be getting a notification and checking something, but yet that snowballs into something else. And yeah. this morning I was at the gym and I noticed this individual wearing the little AirPods in his ears. Then he had his watch on his wrist, his Apple watch, and then his phone over in the corner. And he would constantly in between his workout, do something on his watch, go yeah. over to his phone, do something on his phone. Yeah. And he looked yeah. panicked almost like yeah. I got to get my workout in, but I got to change my playlist, but I got to go check this text message that I got. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the look on his face was just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Like it was just pure anxiety and maybe he felt fine, but to me, it didn't look fine. And not only that, the amount of radiation that he was exposed to he, that he wasn't aware of, that could have been why he felt so much pressure. Oh, now, yeah. you wrote an article called Polarization, a key difference between man-made and natural electromagnetic fields. And you touched on it just briefly. What are some things that people should get that are natural EMF, you know, such as you're probably going to say sunlight, you know, yeah. at the, versus these man-made Bluetooth AirPods and things like that. What's the difference? And, and, you know, are there some healthy forms of EMF? Oh, there are healthy forms of electromagnetic fields. And as you say, the easiest example is, of course, sunlight. Mm -hmm. And from a technical or a physical point of view, it's very different to the man-made fields. The latter are uh, modulated, polarized, and so on, you know, there is a lot of technical humble jumbo around it, and they are indeed artificial. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, you need to really look out for all forms of natural background fields. And people are, of course, aware of sunlight, but also the geomagnetic field is a natural field that is very important. And But also, maybe the behavioral side, after all, is very, very important to look at. And here in Sweden, for instance, last year, the authorities had to remind parents about that you cannot leave children unattended on a beach because mm -hmm. there had been some, um, dr not some, quite a number of drownings mm -hmm. with small children where the parents were occupied with a smartphone and or ear pods. So they didn't react to that the child drowned right in front of them, a few meters ahead of them, you know. And, and the authorities had to go out and say, if you're on the beach, you cannot use your smartphone, ear pods, and that kind wow. of gadgets. That's and awesome. also fire alarms in Stockholm has had to be upgraded from a sound level point of view, because when you have these ear pods and are looking at something on your smartphone, you don't hear the fire alarm like in an underground station or in a shopping mall or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the fire authorities say that this is unusual, that they have to upgrade the strengths so tremendously much to just reach through the gadgets to the brain. So I think behaviorally extremely important. And then of course, um, people, and that has been measured quite a number of times in different uh, laboratories, people that live in a natural outdoor uh, environment like farmers, fishers, hunters, 
uh, people responsible for forests and so on, uh, they do have a much better level of stress hormones of different other types of transmitter molecules, modulators, differentiation factors, vitamins, etc., than the typical city man or city woman. And most of the latter are, of course, very, very stressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and stressed in a way that, I mean, they, they have, at least here in Stockholm, they have become aggressive, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try to talk to people, they will sort of snap back. Yes. like a snapping turtle or a, a dangerous snake or something, you know, yes. and you're just asking them, do you know the time or something, you know? And uh, so, well, there is a lot to be done here. Uh, yes. But if people go and read on your website and think a little bit for themselves, they could take giant steps uh, and, and start changing their life. And when people do, you know, there are these uh, retreats, for instance, and uh, 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 these uh, digital detox centers yeah, and so on. Yeah. And people that attend such occasions and courses, they are extremely happy afterwards. And I haven't seen any real follow-ups yet, but I'm curious to see, will they continue being healthy from that point of view, or will they kind of fall back into the previous behavioral patterns? And I don't know the answer to that question. Well, yeah, because the, the reason I wanted to bring up the, the man-made versus the natural EMF is that basically any sort of addiction, like you mentioned, is a low dopamine issue of the brain, whether it's alcohol, drugs, or phones. Like we get a yeah. hit of dopamine every time we open a little notification. We're looking for that approval on our social media, or we're looking for somebody to return that text message or whatever, yeah. get that little hit. And the blue light stimulates dopamine. But if people will go back to the natural EMF of getting sunlight every day, they're going to naturally raise their dopamine levels to where the phone doesn't become so much of a soothie, if you will. You know, these little yeah. soothies that babies carry yeah. around and they always yeah. have to have their <laughs> pacifier or their baby blanket. Yeah. Now we have a new soothe for adults yeah. which is the little rectangle and it's really unfortunate because they're missing out on a healthy brain where our yeah. brain that's low dopamine it leads to other things too so and go ahead don't forget i mean the cell phone or the light ray tubes in the underground sun they do not contain sunlight mm -mm. Uh, it's a very very artificial type of light and at least in sweden um, you know, sometimes people like myself as scientists, we say, mm, a pity with a certain American. It's so sad that he did what he did. Mm -hmm. Who could that be? Well, Thomas Alva Edison, had he not invented the light bulb, yeah, people yeah. now would have been hibernating and uh, they would have been adapting to the natural light surroundings, meaning very short working days right now yes. and a lot of rest contemplation pondering uh, sleep yeah. good sleep you yeah. know yeah. and then in the yeah. summer time of the year uh, the opposite of course uh, very long working hours uh, and uh, much less sleep and they would feel very invigorated you know mm -hmm. and on the run uh, without any notifications as you say and here in sweden it has been discussed also a lot, especially among teenagers. Um, you know, they, um, um, oh, what you say, uh, they bully each other using foul messages. Yeah. Um, you are an asshole and we will kill you and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And that is of course, extremely stressful, but, and, and you touched upon that, much more stressful is the teenager having a smartphone or a cell phone receiving no messages, right? nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's much more bullying and devastating. And some of these poor young uh, children, you know, have unfortunately committed suicide here in Sweden. And um, wow. Well, and it's not just in Sweden. I mean, you're, the, the, our, our suicide rates in the U.S. are skyrocketing because yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Of, this, yeah. of the stress of that social pressure, but also that low dopamine. They're not getting that activation in the brain, but there's no. so many things that bring dopamine. But going back to what you said about the beach and children 
I want to I want to say that I've actually experienced this. So it's not just in Sweden. I was at a pool with my daughter swimming and I kept my eye on this little two year old that kept coming in and out of the water because her mom wasn't keeping her eye on her. Her no. mother was yeah. on her cell phone. Yeah. And I watched the little girl walk right into the water on this little zero entry and just start drowning. And I grabbed her and yeah. I pulled her out of the water and I yelled for the mom. I was like, here she is. And her mom yeah. was just flabbergasted, like yeah. like she was embarrassed she was flabbergasted but i think hopefully that woke her up to be like do not let these devices yeah. become your everything because life is happening around you and it could be happening negatively if you don't pay attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. and you know for children uh, you only reach uh, need sorry you only need a few centimeters of water right. and they could drown yeah. right in front of you they drown silently they don't sort of jiggle about a lot and uh, uh, they're gone very quickly yeah. and just for mommy or daddy taking or re sending some kind of a text message or something mm -hmm. what's the beef as the american lady said you know, <laughs> i mean jesus what, what's going on yeah and i've been in exactly that kind of situations myself also pointing to parents that wow your child is down here you need yeah. to go down and look at him or her you know yeah. and also like in the underground and on buses and trams you often see small children yelling mommy mommy or daddy daddy mm -hmm. but the parents are gone into an electronic world where you can hardly wake them up with an axe you know oh, yeah. i mean they are so strangely gone you know and they are like zombie sized i always say you know uh, they, they behave that they were living dead more or less and they are just oh 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 and then when <laughs> you look over their shoulder they are like playing a game yeah like word Nothing feud important. or something that's yeah. what they're doing mm -hmm. and um no shocking but you mentioned the satellites also and let's go uh, to some questions about satellites yeah so real briefly though i want to you what you brought up about it's not just at water's edge i mean there is something I read an article about how children as they grow and they see this this um, adult into their devices, they form a resentment for that adult. Like it was actually a, a study I read that the child will actually form some sort of a resentment for their parent. And that's not building that child trust bond that's not showing an example of this is how you raise a child like they're going to grow up and feel like it's normal to be on their device too or maybe want a device very early so yeah. that they can feel like what maybe i'm supposed to have a little phone and a little device that i carry yeah. around yeah. Too. and i always make it a point of like waiting to use if i have to return text or something after my daughter goes to bed or when she's not with me i never want her to be competing for my energy and my attention uh, behind a computer or a screen so that's just yeah. something for people to consider but to that uh, effect we oh go ahead yeah yeah the, the two-dimensional image uh, of a parent or of an adult or whatever, uh, it's not building the strong psychosocial relationships no. as the three-dimensional world. And also it has been uh, a lot of focus here in Sweden on that um, uh, the development of uh, speech and language understanding is hampered mm -hmm. by these two-dimensional tools. So again, a stern, <laughs> angry teacher in a schoolroom, you know, that's generally better, actually, you know, <laughs> and that teaches kids uh, the ABCs and whatever, you know, all of it. Uh, but nowadays, so much is delivered, uh, especially for a little bit older kids via computers, laptops, tablets, cell phones, and so on. And uh, of course, it's a convenience in the sense that then you can probably reduce a lot of the staff costs and so on by doing these electronic demonstrations. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think, um, again, adults, uh, parents and staff and, and headmasters and so on, they need to sit down and start asking themselves, is this really what we want to give the next generations? Okay, we're going to get to the satellites, but you just brought up something interesting because children in schools, as you know, are using iPads and, and books that are connected to all forms of Wi-Fi. And you're having a, a classroom with 20 to 25 kids yeah. 
all on a device, all connected to Wi-Fi. The teachers connected to Wi-Fi. All of these devices are bombarding their little bodies because you wrote another article called The Evaluation of Specific Absorption Rate um, for Electromagnetic Fields, meaning that are we absorbing this radiation into our body or is it passing through us? Because it sounds like this 5G technology, from what I'm understanding, is our bodies are absorbing it. And that yeah, is definitely yeah. going to harm us. Yeah. Uh, let, let me take, I don't own a cell phone, you know, I've never done it. I know it. that, I'm uh, jealous yeah. of you. <laughs> so I will use my vitamin D tablet jar yeah. and this will be my cell phone right now. Okay. Okay. And if I hold it here and talk into it, uh, approximately 25% of the energy will be used for the communication with the base station, with the antenna. And okay. uh, 75% will be absorbed into my head, my hand, arm, shoulder, body. Wow. And when this non-ionizing high frequency radiation uh, and at colossal exposure levels, uh, we are talking about in the order of a quintillion times or more mm -hmm. compared to natural background. And a quintillion is a one with 18 zeros. Absolutely. So it's, biblical, astronomical, colossal exposures, and 75% of that will be absorbed into my body. And in contrast to building materials, which are more or less completely translucent to such non-ionizing radiation, we are not, and so are not, and you don't see it, but I have some, I think you call them urania, uh, we call them pelargon in Swedish, some okay. flowers in flower pots. Okay. They will also be absorbing such energies, mm -hmm. as well as if you have a, a cat or a dog uh, as a pet or a horse or whatever. Uh, and um, when it absorbs into our body, it will be um, slow down. And when it's slowed down, it dispersed energy to molecules, cells, and so on. And that's the kind of reactions you see, of course, with ionizing radiation, like from X-rays, ultraviolet light, uh, radioactive isotopes like uranium, but also from non-ionizing radiation, from cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, uh, baby alarms, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see the same type of reactions inside your body and your children and your spouse and so on. And um, so um, this is um, something that um, people don't really realize. And therefore uh, we wrote the paper about something called the specific absorption rate, uh, which is a measurement uh, done primarily by the industry, but also by radiation protection authorities uh, to technically specify, for instance, an antenna system or a base station system or a cell phone system. Uh, and what it measures is uh, a single uh, um, call, you can call it, uh, of um, six, 10 or 30 minutes, mm -hmm. just one single such call in your lifetime. And you have to live in a completely radiation free environment. How natural is that? Uh, nothing could be present, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then they would calculate, not measure, but calculate uh, an indirect measure for heating. Uh, and they have said that this level, if it's below that, then it's all right. And that's mm -hmm. so-called near field when you hold your um, cell phone right up to your body. But if you get away like um, a third of a meter a foot uh, in, in American terms, then you go into the far field. And the far field is measured in a completely other way, which is more relevant. It's smarter, it's better. And it doesn't take into account such odd things as one single call, completely radiation free, and so on. And, uh, and then you come up with these uh, quintillion times because the far field from these gadgets is extremely strong. And you indicated before that uh, you had like a cell phone and your head and brain is irradiated and maybe it's better to move it away and hold it in your hand and so on. Uh, but then I could tell your viewers and listeners if they want to be sure to get below 
the level scientists have shown in laboratories, then they have to have an arm that is in the order of five to 10 kilometers long <laughs> because you need to put it very, very, very yeah. far away from your body. Yeah. And the problem is, would you have such a long arm? The moment you start reaching out to punch the digits, for instance, to make a call, then you would ap approach the radiation source. So no, you cannot do that. Uh, and uh, again, I have not calculated these levels. That's a very famous physicist here in Sweden who has done that. And I double checked him and he was right. Mm. Uh, he was completely right. So um, all these discussions about specific absorption rate being measured, I didn't say that, but in fluid filled plastic dolls or the far field being measured within a meter that has nothing to do with safety. Safety is when you are a Swedish mile, 10 kilometers away from the gadget. Yeah. And again, there must be a radiation free environment again, because like in Stockholm or in, in Missouri, how should you be able to be 10 kilometers away in radiation free environment? There are sources, and you mentioned before the satellites, it's everywhere. It's yeah, everywhere, you know. It is. And 50 years ago, nothing of this were around. And 50 years ago, we didn't have the epidemic of diabetes. We didn't have the epidemic of cancer. I'm getting more cancer clients than I've had in my entire career. Um, so to that effect, you know, we need to discuss that it's not just your phone. It's not just your iPad no. in your house. You, if you live in a subdivision, you have other people's Wi-Fi, other people's devices, other people's smart meters. Then we have the satellites. So let's talk about that. What is going on with the launching of satellites into outer space? And are those affecting us? Um, indeed, they are. Of course, the radiation from satellites uh, is lower. Uh, mm -hmm. than from a nearby cell phone or a base station and so on. And they would be relayed via various gadgets on planet Earth. Right. So, but, and also we shouldn't forget from a consumption point of view, the consumer, that could be a fantastic technology, especially in very poor countries where it's very difficult for monetary reasons but also practically, maybe, you know, like uh, many countries, they have a lot of uh, hills and mountains and Alps tops and so on. It could be very difficult to build base stations that would cover all the valleys and all the places and so on. But with a few satellites, you can irradiate a very big area, an entire country more or less, and having the right receivers with amplifiers, they would detect the signal and then uh, up, um, uh, increase it uh, in output power and reach your cell phone or your laptop or whatever. Uh, but of course, even the weak signal from a satellite is strong enough to be picked up by living matter. Yes. Uh, because we are sensitive uh, in the order of, as I said, a quintillion times below what we currently are using uh, for these various technologies. And uh, some animals seems to be extremely sensitive. Um, ants, for instance, uh, birds, insects, uh, sharks, um, uh, manta rays, etc. Uh, they are picking up so small changes in potential. So we as scientists even have a hard time with all the sophistication we have nowadays to measure the signals they are picking up. So mm -hmm. the question is bombarding the planet Earth with so-called weak signals from satellites, is that a good idea or not? Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that somewhere, someone has been allowed to make full-scale experiments before these rockets were launched into space but I haven't found these publications, right. you see. So I'm doubting it was actually done. I've never heard any one of these rocketeers, if we call them like that, or these companies and so on, talking about safety experiments. 
an accreditation and evaluation before sending things to space. And then, as you know, various, both scientists and others are complaining about this because it produces a lot of debris. Just a few yeah, days ago. Joke. Yeah, just a few days ago, there was, I think, a Russian satellite that were um, deliberately um, destroyed and the debris uh, threatened this International Space Station. And this is just tomorrow. It, it's beginning now. Just imagine in a few hundred years, uh, will we even be able to see through all this uh, junk up there, you know? Uh, so I hope again, that people know what they're doing. And I said to you before the interview started, I had just finished today, uh, a little bit more than an hour ago, a manuscript uh, where I point to, um, among many things, that probably if we should really be adults, mature and honest and Swedishly brutal, the answer is no, no one, don't really know any longer what we are doing. No. There are so many things going on, driven by greed and profit and money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the rest of us are just supposed to follow along as um, voters or um, constituents or uh, consumers or citizens. You can call us a lot of different names, but we are basically just following uh, and trying to, as we also said, keeping up with the latest so we can be connected because if we don't have the right hardened software in our watches and computers and laptops and baby alarms, then they cease to function. Uh, and uh, so we need to be part of this rat race driven by these commercial entities. And I hope that people will, um, I mean, just say, no, thank you. Now it's <laughs> enough. Uh, I mean, I need to go back to a natural lifestyle. Uh, and um, again, you know, I don't question the usability of computers or laptops or anything, but it, my main um, hobby is amateur gardening. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a garden, you can rake. Yeah. But if you only rake, then you don't have a garden. Then you just have naked soil. Mm -hmm. And that's a good image, you know. You have to use every instrument, every tool when it is needed. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, in Sweden, I don't go out and rake. It would destroy everything. Mm -hmm. The grass, the bushes, the plants, everything. So, no, no. Now I just watch because now all the plants are asleep. Mm -hmm. And so now you don't disturb them. So. Oh, I love that. And you know, there's more info that people can learn. I'm sure you're familiar with Ar Arthur Furstenberg and he has the 5G space appeal that people can go check out, you know, how they can appeal these satellites being launched too, because I was a part of um, a massive worldwide group of people who he had emailed and asked if anybody had health effects on this certain um, time of day when 25,000, something like 25,000 satellites had been launched. And he had asked if anybody had anything happen to them that day. That was the night that I slept zero. Like I didn't sleep at all. And I normally don't have that much trouble sleeping other than, you know, here and there. And many, many other people also said they couldn't sleep that night and they, had, they normally sleep fine or they were nauseated or they came down with some sort of weird overnight sickness, but then it was gone the next day. Our bodies are highly adaptable to some of these um, EMF stressors, but in an acute moment, you can really feel how it is detrimental to our body. And as you said, it's not, it's, it's the consumables. It's like adding up so many different varieties of stressors. And it's just like adding up so many varieties of junk food and expecting it not to harm your body over time. This junk um, EMF affects us the same way. It's slowly deteriorating our body over time. So the more we can take those out, the more you can distance from your cell phone, the more you can turn off your Wi-Fi when you're not using it or plug into an ethernet so that you don't have to have the Wi-Fi around you. Moving into a rural area, like you said, and not being surrounded by everybody else's Wi-Fi, getting outside in nature and appreciating the dopamine hits from the sunlight and yeah. from 
touching the earth. And like you yeah. said, you're an yeah. amateur gardener. I'm an amateur forager. I can't grow a garden to save my life, but I can go out in nature in God's garden and start to forage and learn about plants and discover how many, oh my gosh, 50,000 different edible types of plants at your fingertips um, right out in nature, you know, and these yeah, things are waiting for us, but we'll never yeah. experience them living on Instagram, living yeah. on TikTok. You're not going to experience these things. You're going to see everybody mm -hmm. else's fake experience yeah. and their and, and docudramas and stuff yeah. like that but that's no, not going to heal so your much, body you know it's so much docudrama as you say and uh, uh, i also feel and i know it's it's always uh, dangerous to say this but uh, the more people are on these electronic so-called social media the more non-social they become yes. and also the more uninteresting uh, to talk to adults today doesn't give very much because you can show them rhubarb and a birch tree and they have no clue what you're showing them. Yeah. You cannot yeah. even talk about it. You cannot even tell them you can eat both of them. And as you say, I, I am, um, well, I, I lack the correct English word. It's, it's like uh, my head is spinning when I go out into nature and see the tremendously big amount of things you can eat for instance yeah, yeah. and where people just pass these and looking at their smartphone don't realizing that their dinner is waiting for them and it is a dinner that contains all the things you really need your body needs you know yeah. and um, i hope and and you know also quality wise I, I go on with this on the balcony right now i have swedish winter apples oh. from a place around 360 kilometers southwest of Stockholm and they survive all the time unfortunately I have only three left because oh. I have eaten all of the others <laughs> but you know they are so good yeah. compared to the imported flashy green polished waxy type things yeah. I don't even call them apples, you know. They are things, yeah. <laughs> uh, artificial things, you know, like plastic. Yeah. And these um, uneven, uh, scrubby uh, thing, uh, apples I have, they are so delicious. Yeah. Uh, and and um, wow, I yeah. hope people will discover that again. It's so true. I mean, life is waiting to be lived and there's so much goodness that's been given to us and inflation is on the rise. You go to the grocery store and to buy a bag of salad greens is like yeah. $7, but yet yeah. you can go in your backyard and make a backyard yeah. salad out of dandelion greens and field garlic and all these things. I'm getting ready to make another foraging video that my daughter and I do where we show people here here's how to make a backyard salad yeah. like because you can't hardly afford to go buy it at the grocery store plus as you no. said it's not going to taste near as good as what you've picked yourself that god has grown for you so and you know <laughs> like salad and a lot of other things you can even grow in your windowsill you yeah. know yeah uh, for just sure in pots and you can stretch out and pick it in yeah. the sun like there you know yeah. and that's good here in sweden because as i said Right now, it's pretty cold here, and then it's so easy to grow in your window, and you can regrow, regrow all the winter through, you know, mm -hmm. and eat it right off where you have it. Uh, so, and it doesn't take very much job. I could um, tell all the, your viewers and listeners, it's an easy task, you know, yeah. and it's very rewarding. It is. And, and as you said, if you don't want to grow anything, then you have, and I think 50,000 is actually a too small a number. Probably. I think there are more than that. <laughs> Fungi, um, trees, bushes, plants, whatever, uh, that you can eat out in reality, you know. Yeah, life is waiting to be lived, but we've gotten so sucked into these devices that we think we're living in, but it's stealing our time, it's stealing yeah. our energy, it's stealing yeah. our, our appreciation for life. You know, I love the quote by Audrey Hepburn that says, every day should have one exquisite moment in it. And you can find that out in nature, but it's really, really hard pressed to find that exquisite moment yeah. on Facebook, you know, and so I just really encourage people to 
you know, take a digital fast instead of fasting with food, fast from digital media, you know, give yourself a one day fast. If I'm only going to answer a phone call, if it comes through, I'm not going to do anything on social media or just haphazardly entertain myself by opening my phone and looking through just to see what I can, you know, stand in line at the grocery store and not be bloody bothered to just stand there and breathe. You know, (laughs) I'm instead, I'm going to have to be constantly entertained. Yes. I mean, there's a stress, as you say, if they uh, are queuing in the grocery store, they get angry, really, oh, stressed yeah. and angry, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I always tell people that they should keep one of these. I don't know if you have seen yeah. such a thing. This yeah. is called book. A novel idea. It contains pages, <laughs> and you can read in it, you know, and it's very entertaining. <laughs> and it's up to your personal taste yeah. what kind of book you want to read. This is a Russian science fiction oh. novel, but maybe you are more into cooking or yeah. fashion or technology or whatever. Yeah. There are yeah. books for everyone. And, and this is also for free. You can yes. buy and uh, lend them at the libraries. Right. So, um, wow, there are so much to be done instead of, as you say, constantly being sucked into Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, whatever it is. Because not only do you have that pressure of being on there and not really giving yourself a feeling of what, like, wow, I'm so glad I did that. You know, no one probably has ever gone on Twitter and looked and said, you know, this just, I'm so glad I spent the last 15 minutes on here versus you go on a hiking trail even for 15 minutes and you can't tell me that you're going to walk away from that and go, well, that was a waste of time. You know, like that nature is never a waste of time. Sunlight is never a waste of time because humans were made for this we weren't made for these non-native devices and And, so yeah yeah and also it's never a waste of time to physically communicate with people People. and i i use um i use myself uh, when i move around in stockholm or in the world what i will call the dog trick Uh, if they have a dog we approach them or if they have a baby Mm -hmm. or a child or a cat or whatever yeah. An umbrella, a nice looking umbrella. <laughs> That's the focal point for a conversation. Yeah. You start there, you know, and then you can open up people because there is a reason they have that particular umbrella or that particular child or dog. And mm-hmm. you can find their heart that way. And you said this um, um, fasting, digital fasting, very good idea. And I would combine it also with a food fasting the same day both of them why not sure, yeah. uh, so or consecutive days either way don't forget as we said before uh, that if you live by by healthy standards eating well no you cannot smoke them as a compensation or drink excess alcohol or use drugs or whatever they all count mm-hmm. so you need to look on all of them and reduce the toxic exposure. And I say again, don't be afraid. I've lived my whole life without a cell phone. Aww. So there you go. don't be afraid. <laughs> You've heard it here and, you know, that it, you can do it, it without. It's very important to tell your viewers and listeners, my decision to not have a cell phone had nothing, nothing to do with any health concerns, nothing. Uh, when they were introduced in Sweden, I realized that only important people use them and then as now i am completely non-important oh so i don't, I don't know need about it. that oh <laughs> no, i just don't need it and my whole life has been kind of need based so if i need to eat then i eat but i yeah. don't over consume too much well candy of course <laughs> 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 and and so on, you know. If I if I would need a cell phone, I would buy one, of course, uh, etc. So um, don't be afraid. You can live with a rake, a spade, and a garden. Yes. Okay. So as we wrap up, I want to circle back around to the bees and the insects. So why? You know, people might be concerned about why. Why do I need to care about the bees? I know this is something that you're passionate about. So explain why we will suffer if we don't have the insects and the bees well, from the electromagnetic know, radiation yeah. exposure. Um, there's quite a number of studies pointing to that there is a clear cut effect of uh, electromagnetic fields from cell phone systems and so on on pollinators, on honeybees, on bumblebees, and other insects. Mm-hmm. No question about it. 
And of course, the reduction that we were talking about before, if uh, more than 90% of the bumblebees are gone in the United States and in Germany, more than 75% of the pollinators, that will affect farming. Mm -hmm. And that will affect uh, what you can eat. And there is on the internet, and photographs, they have been allowed to go, I think it's to an American food hall, I think you would call it, a very big food store. Mm -hmm. uh, and they take a photograph of all the fruits and vegetables, and then they remove all the things that are dependent on pollinators like honeybees and so on, and the shelves are practically empty. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. yeah. So if that's what you want to have, turn away, do something else, right. use your smartphone. Mm -hmm. But if you still want your children and yourself to eat fruits, vegetables, and similar things uh, like nuts, etc., then something needs to be done and it needs to be done very quickly because with the speed, uh, these insects are um, being reduced in number. Soon there will be very few left. And already now in, in the People's Republic of China, they're forcing labor out on the fields to hand pollinate flowers wow. with brushes. Mm. Will you do that? <laughs> Will all Swedes do that? No, oh. not yet. They are too lazy, you know. They have bekvämlighet, um, we say in Swedish. They have a, a too good a life. They are not prepared to go out and do anything, you know. They want to be on their smartphone instead. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even if you pour soil, fertilizer, um, and, and um, seeds on a mobile phone, no, you cannot grow anything there, no. you know. You have to get out again. And I am part of a fundraiser call. Uh, and if people are interested, I'm very, very uh, happy if they would contribute. Yeah. And where we talk about that without the bees, no bees, no food, no children. Because uh, the future belongs to any species that can thrive on rock, sand, and nothing really. Mm. and children cannot do that i'm yeah. sorry yeah so it's more than just you know keep them out of the hands of children it's like keep them out of your hands and do something yeah. else with your time because it's affecting future generations you yeah. know so it is vastly important so yeah i'm going to link in the show notes where they can go and check out your work and donate to this research that you're doing yeah. especially making this issue of honeybees become more aware you know anything yeah. you can yeah. do makes a difference so yeah, and definitely. again, the, manu the manuscript I sent today is very much about this, mm -hmm. uh, because this is a central concern. And if I could be again very Swedish, if a few more persons get like a brain cancer, we will survive that. But if we cannot grow food, no. Yeah. then we cannot do very much. And uh, Albert Einstein uh, said that if all the pollinators would go, that would leave mankind in the order of four years of survival. Wow. Four and years. With, and with, like you said, already 40% reduction yeah, and like 90% yeah. of the bumblebees were headed yeah. that way really quickly. Yeah. So people need to become aware. And that's why yeah. I wanted to talk to you. That's why we need our Swedish father to tell us <laughs> brutally that brutal Swede <laughs> talk of like, this is what you need to do. So listen yeah. to your Swedish father. So. <laughs> and, and, and I hope you have the uh, fundraiser call website. So yes, the, you can, yeah, you can send them because uh, I say again, uh, we are in big trouble when it comes to uh, funding. We need to find um, generous people that are prepared and send money. And don't think that a small sum is too small. It's not. Even yeah. a single dollar makes a difference, you know. Yeah. And of course, if you have a million dollars, and even better. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Johansson, this has been such a pleasure as usual. It won't Thank be the you. last time because no, no. Thank you I very think much. people can glean so much from you. And I know I do. And I really appreciate that. So keep up what you're doing. And we will keep promoting this so that we can continue to help you do what oh, you do. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And I will help you.
Oh, thanks. I love it. So, all right. Well, thanks for today. And we'll do this again soon. And please, everybody check out the link in the show notes. And like he said, do whatever you can. Any amount is appreciated. So thank you, Dr. Johansson. Thank you. Hey, want to know a secret tip as to how to get past those late night sugar and carb cravings? Wish you could get rid of those evening ice cream binges and popcorn feasts and wished you were able to wind down without the wine? Well, here's your secret tip. You gotta block blue light. Here's why. Blue light from our devices, TVs, smartphones, tablets, computers, after the sun goes down, tells our brain it's noon. And this is a really long day because we already had a noon today. So release cortisol and oh, by the way, we need more food since this day is so long. So just the action of blocking blue light after the sun goes down could actually thwart your cravings. I mean, imagine it. Imagine if you were uh, living in prehistoric times and you didn't have light after the sun goes down goes down. Would you really crave that piece of fruit hanging on the tree? No, you couldn't go find it. So the secret to not eating so late at night and not getting those late night carb cravings is to block all that blue light. That means dimming the house lights, yeah, and maybe reading by candlelight and not having your devices on. But if your husband's not so keen on you not Netflixing and chilling with him, then it's time you get some Swanwick sleep glasses. That's right, daytime blockers for those day daylight screens, but more importantly, blue light blocking glasses at night. These are amber colored lenses that block out all the blue lights. You can still do your normal routine at night of, you know, playing words with friends if you have to, even though I don't want you on your device that much, or watching TV with your loved ones or whatever it's what's taking your attention as far as blue light at night. So to get your hands on a pair of Swannies or my favorite blue light blocking glasses, you're going to go to Swanwick Sleep dot com that's s w a n w i c k then the word sleep.com and type in my code fit for 10 that's f i t f o r 10 the number 10 f i t f o r the number 10 and that's going to get you 10 percent off your very own amber colored blue light blocking glasses or the daylight blocking glasses if you find that you're one of those people that has 16 different monitors in front of you at your desk during the day what you do all day determines your night so Get that insulin, that blood sugar, those carb cravings under control by blocking that blue light and taking control of your cravings once and for all.